Hey guys, welcome back. Great to see you here. We're going to do something a little different, a little special today than we normally don't do. I'm going to give you three tremendous lessons that we're going to quarterback. Just like in the NFL, we're watching game film with one of your great dentists out there, Dr. Paul Feuerstein out of Boston, Massachusetts. Check this out. All your doubts. I want to talk to you about, you know, hey, night, I'm at And I love that process. Easy thing to think differently. And it's right here. Hey, Ignite, David Rice. I'm here with Dr. Paul Feuerstein. We're here having a little fun in San Francisco, and we're really here right now for you, young dentists, dental students who are looking out to their future. You know, I'm a big fan of um, if I knew then what I know now. Yeah, yeah. Um, guys like Paul can help you know what he know has known for all these years in dentistry. So one of the things we were talking about earlier was what you did early on that helped you so much in dentistry. You want to share a little bit about that? Yeah, you know, I came out of dental school and I had a practice, I actually bought a practice. And it was a very, very small practice, three chair practice. And um, I didn't know what to do about things like charts, people at the front desk. I, had a, I actually purchased the staff. And I went to one seminar, as at, I think it was Yankee Dental, a woman named uh, Jennifer D. St. George, who still is actually uh, working and teaching. And she said, lang she thought all about language, like how do you answer the phone and what words to say, what words not to say, and how to sort of basically organize a, a schedule. Not, nothing fancy, just think about, about workflow and don't jam things together here and leave space for crowns over here and this, that, and the other thing. Um, and so I, from that, she had a series of, uh, where did you hear this? They had a she, had, she had a series of cassettes. <laughs> did anybody know what a cassette is? <laughs> <laughs> That's right. When I started, I bought my practice. We had VHS tapes, so I guess that kind of dates me too. So you know, and I, I listen to these things, and you know, you sit there and you go, "That's pretty stupid." And I, you know, I, that's obvious, but you need somebody to tell it to you. And you need also someone. And and she had a little, you, know, you paid a little bit of money at the time, and you could call her up and say, "What am I doing wrong?" And that they, she'd yell at you, and say, "Well, you know, I told you to do A, B, and C, and you're not doing it." And and so, you, so even though you know what you're supposed to do, you really need a coach of some sort. Lesson one, and before I do that, I have to give a shout out to my wife, Anastasia. Go Cowboys. It's all about communication. It's all about verbal skills. So one of the things we've learned in dentistry for any of us who've been in this for a long time is that patients don't understand what we understand. They're not dentists. They don't know and they don't care. If they smile and it looks good and they're not in pain, everything feels good, the language we're taught in school isn't the language they get. So mastering your verbal skills is very, very important to do. And there are great coaches out there to do it. And by the way, at Fast Track, we got some of those coaches. The earliest you possibly can, start thinking about the end of your career. Every dentist I know who grew up with me said, you know, I'll just go on and, and you know, I'll save some money, but you know, I want to have a nice new car and I want to have this and I want to have that. And we do all these things. And then you become 45, 50, 55 years old and say, yeah, maybe I'll think about retiring, and you start, start saving then, and you could probably build up from that, at that point, you might be able to build up like a half a million dollars or three quarters of a million dollars. If you would start a minuscule, minuscule, a hundred bucks a month, I mean, something as silly as that, even if you don't have it, over the years, the accumulation would be astonishing. Awesome information, Dr. Paul. So point number two, it's a Stephen Coveyism. We gotta begin with the end in mind. I know you as young dentists don't have a lot of money. And as Dr. Paul said, you probably don't have any money. I didn't either. But the coolest thing happens when we start forecasting when it is we want to retire one day. If you want to retire at age 50 or 55 or 60, whatever your number is, you need to know it now at age 25. So you can start planning for the future. And then you just turn it over to a financial advisor, someone who you really know and you really trust. You don't have to have the money to hand them, but they've got to be able to give you a game plan, right guys? They've got to know how to win this game. So if you want to walk away at age 55, that person has to share with you how much money you're going to need based on the lifestyle. Are you going to have kids? Are you going to have grandkids? Do you like to travel? Do you want to live the same lifestyle you've had your whole career? Or do you want to live lean after that? So having a game plan, beginning with the end of the mind, great point number two, Dr. Paul. Let's hit point number three. When you go to dental meetings, Sometimes you sit at a table, you're in a class, or at a dinner meeting, and someone says, hey, let me show you this picture. He pulls out his phone. He says, I did this MB2 case, and it was on. Have another life. Please have another life. You need to do something outside of dentistry. I mean, you can be as focused as you want, but you have to have some avocation. 
you have to do something. Um, in, my, in my case, it's music. I just can go away someplace in my own brain, play the guitar, play the piano, play whatever I want to do, something like that. Wow. Awesome point, Dr. Paul. Listen, there's a lot of quarterbacks in the league who've played too long because they don't have anything outside of the NFL. So guys and gals, what I want you to remember is something you already know, and it's really important I stress to you is don't live to work, work to live. I hope you enjoyed this content as much as I enjoyed sharing it. If you did, hit the like, hit the subscribe. Thanks for joining us. Till next time, together we rise. Your doubts. I want to talk to you about, you know, hey, Nate, I'm at you. And I love that process. Easy thing to think differently, and it's right here.